Ahora bien, ¿saben ustedes cuál es? Do you know what the most widely used language is today in the commercial and trade sector and in the world of science and technology? By far the most common language used for communication, whether between German people and Spanish people, Spanish people and Italian people, Italian people and French people. Even the French use it, much to their chagrin, because they're very proud of their language and reluctant to accept another, but they have no choice. What is the international language? English! English! There is no doubt about it. Just as the international language in the Middle Ages, the one all educated Europeans used to communicate, regardless of their country of origin, was Latin. Why has English triumphed? Over the course of this class, we will devote a significant amount of time to studying the spontaneous emergence of social institutions. In any sphere, in the sphere of language, like we are discussing now regarding the development of the term entrepreneur and its meaning. In the sphere of law, in the sphere of morality, which derives from the Latin word mos moris, meaning tradition. In the sphere of economics, institutions like money, law, property, market, exchange. We will see that the life of a human being depends on institutions which are simply patterned behaviors we learn to adopt automatically, without being able to identify the concrete social function they fulfill. They incorporate a huge volume of information, great wisdom, because they have formed little by little as a result of the contributions over many generations of countless human beings. If you pick up Cicero's treatise, De Republica, you will find that he quotes the great Cato, who declares that Roman law is markedly superior to that of other peoples because it is, and I quote, not due to the personal creation of one man, like Solon in Athens, or Lycurgus in Sparta, but of very many. It has not been founded during the lifetime of any particular individual, but through a series of centuries and generations in Rome. This is the idea I am now referring to concerning language. English is the language par excellence in all spheres, because it is basically a free language. There is no Royal Academy of the English language. English emerges and evolves through the participation of all those who speak it. And the term entrepreneur provides us with a very handy example. In fact, there did not used to be a word for entrepreneur in English. If we pick up economics books from the 18th and beginning of the 19th centuries, we find that none of those authors had a word for entrepreneur. Sometimes they used merchant. Other times they used adventurer. Adventurer. Ven ustedes que... Pues sí. As you can see, these terms reflect part of the meaning of entrepreneur, but they do not hit the nail square on the head. In other places we find the word undertaker, but unfortunately that brings to mind death and funerals. So there was no adequate term. Well, in the English-speaking world, if there is no appropriate word on hand, a word is simply borrowed. A word is just taken from another language, and immediately it becomes part of the heritage of the English language. This is exactly what happened with the term entrepreneur. Today it is written just the same in English as in French. If you look in any standard English dictionary, Webster's or the Oxford English Dictionary, for example, you will find the word entrepreneur, with the same meaning in English as in French, and with the same meaning as empresario in Spanish. English speakers simply took entrepreneur straight from French. Al empresario.